Hey guys, today's video I'm just going to tell you what happened. Uh, if you saw on Twitter, uh, we let you guys know that we had gotten in a car accident on Monday and I really can't make any sort of video today except for this. So I did want to tell you what happened. We are okay. Everything is fine. I just wanted to tell you what happened and yeah, that's about it. This is all I can do. <laughs> we really appreciate everyone reaching out and giving us well wishes. Uh, it means a lot. And anyone that's been in a car accident, you know it's scary, it's not fun, and uh, the last couple of days have been miserable, but like not the worst ever because everything's fine. Julie's here too. Say hello. <laughs> we went to Buffer Festival this weekend. Uh, so Monday we were flying back from Toronto which was international travel. It's not like, you know, the fastest thing in the whole wide world. We woke up at four. Our flight was early in the morning. So we got back to LA at around noon and we were already very tired. I already don't like flying. Usually we would take some sort of like Uber or like bigger car home. Uh, but this time we didn't book anything in advance. So we were just gonna take a cab. So Julie and I and Rome all got in line uh, downstairs at the airport where you get like a regular taxi uh, which should have been fine so, and we were in town like noon we were excited to have the rest of the day to go and like relax <laughs> we first of all we sent Rome in the cab ahead of us because she was behind us and we were like no Rome after you go ahead so she was not in the cab with us um, and I'm honestly glad that we got in that cab because she might have been sitting in the front seat or whatever who knows can't think about that stuff trying not to we get in the cab and it's a small little like get it out Prius. Like there's really nothing in it except for like the cab wall and like a bench in the back where Julie and I are sitting. Let me set the scene for you, okay? So I had my headphones in, I was listening to music and I'm sort of crouched in the back seat like this, you know, not really sitting correctly. Julian was like, oh, what, are you just gonna listen to music without me? And we live like, it would take us what, half hour to get home? So it's not like a short cab ride. You know, we're gonna be in the cab for a little bit. So I start kicking back, relaxing, got my headphones in, and Julian's like, I wanna listen to music too. So I give him the other headphone, and I immediately change the song to Cupcake, Deep Throat. So it sounded like this. Hot me, fuck me. <laughs> and we were just like jamming out, and like both on our phones, and we were on the 405 headed towards our house in the carpool lane in our Prius, and our driver was just speed demoning, like it was like 70 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. And the next thing we know, I remember the first thing I remember is I heard him yell because Julie and I are both in the back seat. The car starts like crashing, and it feels like it's lasting forever, but apparently either he or the person next to us, because we didn't see it, um, we were listening to Hunt Me. <laughs> One of them tried to switch lanes and we collided and there was just like a lot of crashing happening. Julie and I were both wearing our seatbelts and so the worst of the damage is for me on my knee, I'll show you in a second, on my knee because it was against the wall and where the seatbelts were. Like immediately after the crash, we like couldn't breathe. Like it takes all of the wind out of you. It's like getting the wind knocked out of you, but like also your neck and your head and your brain and all of that. And so it was pretty scary. And all of us, like us and the taxi driver were just like trying to catch our breaths and like breathe, um, making sure that your body is okay. And I started to lose consciousness and I don't know whether it was for, from like this impact or like what it was, but everything that I was seeing was like white, I couldn't really see. And I felt myself like I could just go to sleep right now, which is terrifying. So my ball. So I put my head down between my legs as far as I could and was just breathing because I'm also prone to just passing out. You know, if I see something scary on TV, I'll pass out. Julian was okay. We're trying to see if we're okay. And, uh, you know, we could see the other driver. It was just one guy, I think, in his car. And it was just... It was terrifying. It was just really scary. Thankfully, we were all okay. We were all wearing our seatbelts. And the worst injuries that we have are bruising and stuff from the actual seatbelts, thank God, as opposed to not having our seatbelts on or, you know, there was a big white SUV behind us. The woman in that is the, actually the one that stopped and called 911. But, you know, she could have rear-ended us. It could have been 
far worse than it was. She actually got out and was the one that asked us if we needed paramedics. She called 911 and she gave me some water, which kept me from passing out. But we were able to just sort of get out of the cab after a while, like once paramedics got there and stuff, and essentially walk away uh, without any major injuries. We went to the hospital. We were there for a long time. We were in the ER. ER. <laughs> Julie and I got separated. <laughs> so I was in like a sketchy bed in the hallway and you were like in some room, right? Oh, and also, here's another thing. I actually peed my pants. <laughs> Just leave me alone. Like after the car accident happened and it was sort of like when we were getting out, I realized that I had actually peed my pants. Maybe this is TMI, but maybe also just to normalize your experience if it ever happens to you. Like, it wasn't because I was scared. I wasn't cognizant of it happening. It was the seatbelt, like, restricting onto my stomach so hard because I was sitting kind of like an asshole. So, I peed my pants. Like, when the paramedic was like, here, have a seat in the, um, ambulance. I was like, um, sir, uh, I actually peed my pants a little. He's like, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll clean it up later. I'm like, okay, thank you. So then we got to the ER and Julie and I are separated. So it was a little scary. And of course, like for those of you that know me, know that I don't like needles. Uh, shots I'm okay with, but getting blood drawn and IVs are like nightmare town to me. Absolute nightmare. So I'm telling them my injuries. I'm like, you know, my neck, my back, my ribs hurt, um, and my knee hurts. And they're like, okay. And then they come back and they're like, we got to We got to First of all, we got to take blood. Second of all, we're going to need to hook you up to an IV and put some dye in your blood so that we can get some contrast and check you for internal bleeding. And I was like, oh, sick, fucking tight, hell yeah. Great, this, this day is just keep getting so much better. Oh my God, fuck yeah. Finished with Julian, they did x-rays on him. You didn't have any broken bones. And they did an x-ray on my chest and stuff. And we've both broken ribs in the past from playing like baseball and softball. And it feels like the closest your rib could be to broken without actually be, be, being broken. Like it feels like a broken rib back here. I know you feel that way too, which is terrible. Like it hurts to cough and laugh, breathe, sneeze, all of those things. But no broken bones. The nurse came. Uh, well, first a guy came and he drew blood. And I always tell people drawing my blood in the like first couple minutes, I'm like, you know, I'm not good with this. Uh, I will probably start crying. Worst case scenario, I might pass out, but I haven't done that in a long time because I've been getting over my fear. So he drew blood. And then the next nurse came by to hook me up with an IV and couldn't get this one to work again. And then she did it on this arm. <laughs> so I'm already like just sitting there like quietly sobbing and I'm like, no, I'm okay. You can just keep going. She couldn't get this one to work. So we had another nurse come over and hook me up like here. So I'm already just having the worst time ever. No, Julian's nowhere to be found. I don't know if he's okay or whatever, but it was terrifying. Then he came over thankfully and was like, I'm good, but then the fun part happened. I had to, is it a CT scan or a CAT scan? CT. It was a CT scan. So I'm in the, this big giant circly whirly thing and uh, the guy injected some iodine into my IV and made my blood feel hot and my mouth taste like metal, but I had no internal bleeding, which was good. And the guy that did my CT scan was like, oh, I saw that crash on the 405. Was that you? And I was like, yes, it was. And he was like, oh, that, that looked, Terrible, and I was like, thank you for understanding, sir. Appreciate that. But nobody checked out my knee, and they almost refused Julian some, like, Advil. We, we both refused prescription painkillers. Uh, that's a personal choice. I'm just terrified of them unless I had, like, a major surgery. So we are trying to just tough it out with some ibuprofen and ice and stuff. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, I'll show you what happened. If you're a little squeamish, just don't. Maybe look for some of it, but it's really not that bad. That's where my IV was. Yeah, you can zoom in. Wait, you have bruising from the IV? Yeah, I have bruising from the IV. Wait, is that bad? What does that mm. mean? No, that means that they, were, they weren't good with it. There are nurses that know how to do it well, and these nurses didn't. Yeah, well, my veins weren't particularly cooperative. I'll show you the bruising from the seatbelt, which is best because it saved our lives. So it's like this part. Sorry for being a little chubby and up through my back. This one is a little graphic. I might have to blur some of this because it's on my chest. This is a little graphic. I'm trying my best. I'm trying not to show my nipple here, but this, this is the bruise on my boobie. 
from the seatbelt. I'd say the most painful right now is my leg still. This is my knee. I hit the wall thing right there and this part is all numb, <laughs> like I can't feel anything. The pain isn't the worst ever, but I'm having a hard time walking still or putting weight on this leg. Um, so we're just trying to stay off of it and put ice and elevate it and stuff, but we haven't had a chance to get like looked at by uh, our regular doctors and stuff. But we're okay and we're good. And that's why this is kind of all I can make today. So I do apologize for that. It's just, this is what happens, it's life. Sometimes you get in a car accident. Oh, and also, this is like some ultimate universe fuck shit. Julian's mom, bless her, came to the hospital and picked us up and was gonna drive us home because, you know, a really fun thing to do after you get in a car accident is uh, get back into a car and have to ride 30 minutes back to your house. So Julian asked his mom if she could maybe try and take side streets because we just didn't want to get back on the 405. We were in like Culver City and all of a sudden we're driving through a police shootout. So there's like a guy standing on the sidewalk and two cops behind a cop car, both with their guns drawn. One of them had like a big gun and then behind another corner of another building are two more cops with guns pointed and no one's stopping traffic, we're just sort of driving by. So Julian's mom pulls into a gas station, but we're like directly in the line of fire should there actually be a shootout. And I just start like freaking out. That was like my freak out point of the day. Like I'd had it, I'd just gotten off a five hour flight, international travel, we get in a car accident, we go to the ER, and now I'm in a police shootout? Is this day done yet? Fuck, and we're just like in so much pain. When you think your day is gonna be all right, psych, psych. But you know I still penciled in my eyebrows today because I'm still living my best eyebrow life. But yeah, that's uh, the update of what's going on. Um, I think we should be good uh, next week, um, but no like life altering injuries as far as we know. Uh, hopefully my knee turns out to be okay, but it feels all right. We're incredibly lucky. Always wear your seatbelt, please. Please, if ever you get in a taxi and you're in the back, you think about not wearing your seatbelt, just maybe remember this. And um, I just hope that you, I, I think a lot of people are really good about wearing their seatbelts in their cars or the friends' cars, but maybe not always in a taxi depending where you live. And I know I've like done it in the past and just never again, nor will I ever get in a taxi if the seatbelt doesn't work or there isn't one for me. Like it's just not worth it. And I'm just so glad and thankful that we were both wearing ours and that the driver was and the other driver and they were both okay as far as we saw, although we seemed, we got like whisked away in an ambulance. We didn't really, I didn't really see the aftermath of anything, but um, yeah, just we're glad, right? Uh, we had like different injuries. So Julian was sitting upright like a normal person. So his like back and neck really hurts and my like rib and knee really hurt, but we have like different injuries so we can help each other. I'll do the lower body <laughs> Yeah, stuff. like right the first day you were like, I can do leg stuff if you can do arm stuff. I was like, I can do arm stuff. Thanks so much uh, for all of your well wishes. We really appreciate it. And hopefully next week we'll be back with a regular video and nothing like this. Love you so much. Wear your seatbelt. Please wear your seatbelt. Always, always, always. All right, goodbye.